In March 2011, after decades of patriarchal oppression, feminists around the world rejoiced as the fight for equality was won at last. We received a guarantee of equal pay, our reproductive rights were protected, and razor manufacturers worldwide ensured that pink and blue razors would cost exactly the same. And on that day, as a sign of our true equality, women ran topless through the streets singing a song of just kidding, none of that happened. But we did celebrate an important milestone. The month of March was declared Women's History Month, an entire month dedicated to commemorating the contributions of women to society, which is also great. In unrelated news, Fireside is proud to announce our very first true crime series all about women who murder. Over this next series of episodes, we'll posit that there are not actually fewer female serial killers. There is just less recognition for our criminal contributions. Or maybe we're just better at getting away with it. Our first story introduces us to Dr. Anne Spiri, a saint-like physician and daring aviator administering vaccines to the sick of East Africa. Of course, there was also a time when they called her Dr. Claude, and her needle did anything but heal. Never Explain is the first installment in our series, She's a Killer Queen. It was recorded live in New York City on February 23, 2020. Sir, you've done it. They're perfect. Yes, they are rather good if I do say so myself. The bush will never be able to tell. How did you forge them? I stole a sack of blank identity cards. With these, we can create new lives for so many. I swipe them right from under the nose of the Nazi guard. How brave. I'm so proud of you, my own sister, fighting the good fight. You make our family proud. Now, I hate this, but I have to ask for more. Anything. Would you feel comfortable keeping a radio here? We need to contact British Special Operations, and we want someone trustworthy in Paris. And besides, as a medical student, you hear things, see things the rest of us do not. Will you do it? Of course. And it is dangerous. I am ready. I can tell. But I worry about you. You, you are perhaps a little reckless. Please, stay safe. Who knows where you could end up one day? Sperry, good to see you home. You, you shouldn't be out in the noonday sun. The Kenyan heat can be so hot. I, I, shall I make you lunch? Nope. I'm off to Lake Victoria. We just got a shipment of vaccines and I'm eager to get them out. I just want to find my backup stethoscope. Last one I smashed this morning. Bit of a dodgy landing. I'm not as young as I used to be. Well, uh, if you have a moment, there's someone here who wants to join you. Hello, um, I'm Theodore Bolton. I'd love to join you on one of your exciting adventures. Oh, I don't take... He's been waiting here for quite a while. He's also called numerous times. I'm a reporter with the Times of London, and we were interested in doing a piece on you. Uh, what? I don't talk about the war. I have nothing to say, even. Why would you think Oh, oh that... no, I, I wasn't. Um, I've heard, and I want to reassure you that it's not about that at all. Um, we've heard about your, frankly, heroic efforts, not only here in Kenya, but all across Africa. We think people back home would be very interested. I'm afraid I don't take passengers. If you're interested, make a charitable donation to the Flying Doctors Organization and a secretary will oh, call you. Uh, we know all about the Flying Doctors as an idea. Uh, people have heard about that, obviously. And now they want something more personal. The story of the hardest working doctor this side of Timbuktu. Uh, her struggles, her successes. Uh, I don't know. I I'm a very private person. Would I get final say over what is distributed? Oh, of course, of course. Um, and a higher profile would certainly help donations to the cause. Well, I suppose if it helps the patients, you can join me for one flight. I hope you're ready, though. What I do, well, it's satisfying, but it demands a lot. You know, I'm, I'm glad she's taking you. Keep an eye on her, will you? 
She's used to relying on herself alone, but I I'm afraid she's getting old. If she's not more careful, she could get into real trouble. Papo, I've just heard. The Nazis have taken Francois. No, my son. Who knows how much they know already? We must destroy everything here. Burn it all. We'll cover our tracks, then run. Don't forget the identity cards. And the maps. Anne, who is that? Guards! Already! They're coming inside! Quick! Out the back! We can catch a train to Switzerland and disappear! I left papers in my desk at the hospital. You'll have to leave them now. I can't! Come. They're too sensitive. It's just around the corner. If I can you're make caught, it. You will be you killed. You go. I will double round and get into the hospital from the no. back. Anne! That's her! Halt! <laughs> ah, Anne Spurry. We've been looking for you. Men, has she been hurt? We want this one alive. For questioning. Please, please, I've done nothing wrong. Ah! Take her away. <sighs> are you okay? Are you hurt? They, they are monsters. I know, I know, child. Here, uh, let me see if I can help. I'm a doctor. Dr. Louise Lepores. I used to study medicine. We can take care of each other, then. What will happen to us? They're taking us to Ravensbrück. What's that? It's like Auschwitz, but for women. Try to enjoy your night in the cell. Tomorrow they pack us onto trains and ship us out like we are cattle. Now, Theo, as long as you're here, you can help unpack. I'm not as young as I used to be, you see, and we have a lot here. Oh, of course. And, well, since you brought it up, how old are you? I'm 80. And before you ask, yes, I plan on doing this until the day I die. That's incredible. Uh, how many patients have you treated? Hmm, about 20,000 wow. per year. Per year? That's... You must work almost constantly. And that's more than... 50 a day. I can easily get through 100 a day. Most of it isn't complicated, you understand. Much is just giving out advice, injections, pills. A lot of the time I just line them up and shoot them with a good dose of vaccines. No, but you work under such terrible conditions. It's n not the worst in the world. I'm so hungry. I can't do this. I, I can't. Shh, shh, shh. It's, it's going to be okay. We've been processed already. All they are doing now, apparently, is shaving our heads. Just stay calm. You can get through this. Guard! Not that one. That one is too pretty. You, come here, girl. Me? I like the look of you. I'll help you get food. Follow me. Anne. Anne! Be careful of that one. Did you see the way she talked to the guard? He's a Nazi and he just took it? She's no ordinary prisoner. Was she a prisoner? I thought... Of course she was. Look at how she's dressed. She's like the rest of us, but not like us. I, I can't explain it. Anne, be careful. Hurry, girl, now! Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, Mrs... Maury. Carmen Maury. I remember when I first arrived here... It was awful. The things I had to do to survive. You stay with me, I'll make sure you're okay. Now, you will be able to stay here with me, should you accept my offer. Oh, it has individual beds. A little bit of room, a privacy screen. It's really much nicer than it seemed from outside. Does everyone get this? Not exactly. Behind the screen are the... Uh, others. <laughs> oh. 
Oh my god, there's... How many people? 500, give or take. And how many beds? Just over 30. Each morning you check to see who died in the night. The corpses you dump in the wheelbarrow, then incinerate. Oh my god. We do what we can. But some... Well, it's a challenge to take care of so many with so little. I... I can help? I'm only a medical student, but sure, there's something I can do. You're so kind. Just stay with me. Life will be good. I do have a question. How did you... Well, I don't know how to put it, but why... Why aren't you in charge? I am extremely well-connected. Even here. Goebbels, Goering, Himmler... You name a Nazi, I've rubbed shoulders with them. My placement here is, well, hopefully temporary. I spied for the Nazis, and then I got caught. And then in return for sparing my life, I then spied for the French. But they paid garbage, so I came back. Unfortunately for me, people had heard of my uh, little flirtation. So here I am. I must say, that was extraordinary work. I've never seen someone do so much in one day. You'd be amazed at the number of lives you can affect in a single day. Well, I commend you. Uh, Now, another question. Many left after Kenya's liberation. You stayed. Cowards. It was somewhat dangerous, yes. The Mau Mau were causing a bit of a ruckus. But as long as you had your gun, you were fucked. Well, that's a very brave stance to take. Not many would be quite so calm in the middle of a war zone. Uh, There were true atrocities committed. Not just around you, but some would say towards you. I mean, it was a war against colonialism, after all. And, well, being European, you were... Let's just say I can understand. People have to do things sometimes. Mrs. Morey, Dr. Claude. Officer Octorhoff, what a pleasure to see you. Yes. Now, as the honorary prisoners of Bunk 10, there are certain duties we wish you to perform. You are aware, no doubt, of who is healthy, who is sick, who is worthy, who is not. Of course. We keep a very close eye on everyone. Good. From now on, at the morning and evening count, you will signal to us who will be removed and who will stay. My God, these are my friends! Who feeds you? Hmm? Who makes sure you stay warm, stay clean? Is it these friends, or is it the wisdom of our Fuhrer? The, the wisdom of our Fuhrer. Exactly. We must all do our part for the fatherland. Besides, why should you give up your privileges just to protect these sick and useless? They'll meet their ends soon either way. Don't worry, little one. The guards will kill anyway. At least this way we can guide them, protect ourselves and those who please us. Oh, I suppose that's good. So you agree? Be practical, girl. I... Yes, I do. Theo, I hope you have enough material. I can't take passengers off, and it's just not practical. Ian! Ian! I hope you don't mind me dropping around. I wanted your advice on a patient. Of course. Uh, hello, I'm Theodore Bolton. I'm a reporter for the Times of London. I'm doing a piece on the first female flying doctor. Uh, you were a flying doctor as well, then. Uh, you must tell me what it's like working with Anne. Oh, she's a marvel. I'm guessing she hasn't told you much. Hardly anything, I'm afraid. <laughs> Well, let me fill you in. 
Did you know she once flew through a military coup? No. She did. The Kenyan president had declared a state of emergency. There was rebellion afoot, you see. No civil flights allowed. But as luck would have it, not an hour later, Anne got an SOS call. A pair of girls had been attacked by a rabid hyena. It was a dog. <laughs> Luckily, she had anti-rabies vaccines. This woman flew right up above the clouds and out of Nairobi radar. Now, now I don't know if you've ever been that high in a depressurized plane. But let me tell you, it's bad. You can hardly breathe up there. Very hard to even think straight. Anyway, she dives down, shoves the vaccines out the window, tells a man how to use them, and then she's up. Up again like a fighter pilot, straight into the air. Didn't dare use the radio, just navigated by sight and instinct. Wow, it's incredible. Oh, you had a question for me, Charles? I, <coughs> I'd like to help. We all have to do our, our part, aren't, don't we? <coughs> oh, my Lord, are you all right? Hey, hey, quick, Peters, get her a chair. She'll work herself to death if we don't stop her. <coughs> It's not that I have a problem with either of you. I, I just question why a medical student is in charge. I am fully qualified, and this girl... You, you will refer to my esteemed colleague as Dr. Claude. But, but her name is Anne, and she's not Dr. Claude. It is not just a question of skill. It is a question of loyalty. Can you provide what she does? I... Uh, I, I I would be willing to be your companion. You do have so much food. <laughs> Prove it. That girl, uh, the one who's singing, I cannot stand. Uh, uh, Pauline? Kill her. What? No! Dr. Claude! Consider it done. Anne! You're sick. Hmm. From the shape of your arms and the number of ribs you have poking through, I'd say you were the sick one. Pauline, where are you, my pretty little girl with a pretty voice? You know you can't hide. There you are. Please, no, Anna. Uh, Dr. Claude. Hold still, this won't hurt a no, bit. No, 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 please, I'll, I'll do anything. It's just a little medicine. It will end your pain. I've seen, I've seen what this does to the others. You do something, they die. Please, please, I'll do anything. Perhaps I'll spare you. <laughs> Tell me what a good doctor I am. You're a good doctor. An amazing one. The best I've ever seen. I... <laughs> no, my hand must have slipped. Oh, well. It is for the best. It's not like you can hold a grudge against me now. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. We have no more food to give. There might be some down at the church, but... Papa, it's me! Anne? Anne? Anne, is, is that really you? Anne! Everyone! Everyone! Anne's home! Oh, I knew God would bring you back to me one day. Oh, how I've hoped and prayed for this day. It's a miracle. He smiles down upon us. Anne! Anne's home! You do look so well. I am... I'm amazed. You've only been home for a few days. Do you really think you're ready to go out? Oh, I'm ready. Besides, Papa, it's a party for the French resistance fighters. Isn't that exactly what we need now? To have fun. To celebrate our hard work. It is true. And I thank God you're doing so well. Go. Oh, enjoy your party. Hello? I brought Dom Perignon. Don't ask where I got it. <laughs> Hello? Where is everyone? Anshbury? This is a free French forces court of honor. 
And we mean to try you on three counts. Impersonating a doctor, being a traitor to the French, and bringing shame on France through inhumane behavior. We also mean to investigate murder, complicity to torture, and crimes against humanity. I'm innocent! I'd never do that! I- I'm a doctor! I was at Ravensbrook. Do you not remember me? I certainly remember you. <laughs> Tell me it's not true. They're lying or, or mistaken or, or may they, maybe they've got the wrong person. I'm so sorry. God damn it, Ryan! It was hard. I had to do things it to survive. It was hard on all of us. We survived Nazi-occupied France. We all suffered. But you, you made a sport of your fellow inmates. They say you enjoyed it. I don't know what to tell you. I've had to... Do you know what your brother did? When he was sent to the camps, he used his skills as an architect. He drew pictures for the others of the homes they would have when they were free. You had to do none of it! I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I have a friend. He has a boat. She can take you away, far away from here. You will be safe. But I don't ever want to talk to you again. Papa! I said I don't want to talk to you ever again. The boat is ready, Miss Spurry. Can I have a moment with my father, please? A moment only. We do have to leave soon. Hoppo, I know you're not talking to me, and I understand why. In fact, I'm amazed that any of this is happening. I don't deserve it. I will do everything I can to honor you, our family. I know I can't erase my sins. I just want to say one day I will make you proud. Or I will die trying. Miss Spurry, it's time. Goodbye, Papa. Wave to me, won't you? I will wave. I will make you proud. I swear it. Dear readers, as a brief follow-up to my article, Anne Above Kenya, I have some disturbing revelations to report. Dr. Speary passed away some nights ago, and discovered among her possessions were a number of items that bring to light well-guarded secrets of Anne's past during the war. Rumors of a murky past have long been overshadowed by her decades of bravery and self-sacrifice. However, Recent developments suggest that she indeed was not only a prisoner at Ravensbrook, but perhaps played a more horrifying role of complicity and brutality in the Nazi concentration camp. I, like you, reader, may find it almost impossible to believe a daring humanitarian such as Anne could be capable of what is now whispered. But the evidence against her is compelling and consistent among many witnesses. I'm afraid there was a lot more to Anne's story than we ever knew. A perplexing tale of darkness next to the bright brilliance of her work here in Africa. Dr. Anne Shpiri, born 1918, died 1999. Beloved physician, daring aviator, heinous Nazi war criminal. If no bad deed goes unpunished, then the true story of Ms. Spury suggests quite an exception to the rule. (laughs) 
and that was Never Explain. The cast featured in this episode include Rebecca Kopeck as Dr. Anne Spiri, James Reeser as Francois Spiri and Charles, Eric Davy Gislason as Henry Spiri, James Kleinman as Theo, David Linton as The Guard and Captain Bess, Mary Murphy as Carmen Mori, James Scully as Actor Hoff and Jack, Casey LaForest as Pauline and Odette, and the part of Dr. Louise Lepores was played by me, Ali Silva. Never Explain was written and directed by Holly Payne Strange. Our live show and podcast are produced by Gustavo Rodriguez and me for Fireside Mystery Productions. Our musical score was improvised and performed by Nico Slater. Our sound effects design was led by Greg Russ with Ricardo Delgado, Dan Naglia, and Ali Silva. Live show sound was engineered by Evan Sachs with Ricardo Delgado. Our technical director at the Slipper Room is Johnny Goddard. Our production manager is Liz Lizer. Jason Graves composed our theme music, and I manage our audio post-production. We, the motley crew that makes this Fireside Mystery Theater, dedicate as much as is humanly possible into creating our unique brand of audio entertainment. We do it because we love it, just as so many of you love listening. And this is just the kind of escape into the healing imagination that we need nowadays. We hope that if you are able, you would consider becoming a Patreon patron to throw some kindling onto our fires to help keep our creative loins a burning. Your contribution through Patreon, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars or more per month, can provide the vital lifeblood we need to keep doing this thing we do. We will have infinite thanks for you. Plus, we have some rewards that may tickle your fancy. We've got discounts on merch, postcards from Sunken Harbor, audio greetings from cast members, podcast shoutouts, a snazzy Fireside Mystery Theater enamel pin, and exclusive bonus content. And by bonus content, I mean the specially dedicated Patreon playlet. They are extra audio treats from each series that are released only on our exclusive private Patreon feed. Sometimes the playlets are companion pieces to episodes on our regular feed. Sometimes they are touching. Sometimes they are hilarious. But they are always exclusive and special for our patrons at the $5 or more per month level. From the series She's a Killer Queen, we've got a piece called My Name is Fire. If you want to hear FMT go all Game of Thrones, well, this will be a treat. Treat yourself and treat our ongoing endeavors by becoming an FMT Patreon patron today. Go to patreon.com slash fireside mystery theater or follow the link on our website. We are so grateful for any support you can give to help us keep the embers of our fireside flickering. Do we have you under our spell? Then become a subscriber on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or wherever your favorite episodes live. Are you local to Manhattan or in possession of a pilot's license? Fly in for our next live show and see how the magic is made. Tickets on sale now at slipperroom.com or follow the link from our website. Stay tuned for The Murder of Belle Gunness. You'll laugh, you'll weep, you'll need to sleep with the lights on. Coming up next from Fireside Mystery Theater. Was Dr. Shpiri washed clean of her crimes by a sea of good deeds? Or was she beyond redemption, forever marked by her shadow self? All we can do is shed a light upon her story. It's up to you to mind the shadows.